But let's catch up with our blogger to the nation and Daily Telegraph columnist Tim Blair joins us as ever from Western Victoria. And in Melbourne, we're joined by special guest Mark Nicholson. You met him the other week when I caught up with the geniuses behind those uh, One Nation Please Explain cartoons. And before I let you utter a word, Mark, I'm going to play this clip to remind everybody about your genius. Look, I don't set the price of oil, mate. Now give it here. I don't set the price of oil, mate. Cough it up. Yeah, you changed the script line on us, Mark. Uh, great stuff. Great to have you here. And it's kind of handy because um, the real Albo, the, the Prime Minister's actually on holidays again this week. Uh, he's, there's no problems in this mate, country. He's just decided to take um, a week off. <laughs> mate, he's going to get a Kit Kat commercial soon, I'm telling you, the amount of breaks this bloke's taking. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, it must be tough. Um, with all those poll numbers and stuff. But, um, mate, I reckon he's, he's had more spells than Hogwarts, this bloke. He's, I reckon we get a new nickname for him. He's going to be called Albo Dumbledore because he's always having a spell. Um, but, yeah, did you see him down at the Foo Fighters concert as well with, uh, with old Marsha Hines? Did you yeah. see that one? I do. Look, at we've got that picture up on screen now. Now, I, I, I interviewed Marsha the other week. She's so lovely and uh, she's a big fan of John Howard, but that's how magnanimous she is. Tim, she'll even have a photo taken with Albo. Yes, and it's uh, it's interesting with Alba. You can always tell when he's on holidays. He's in Australia, <laughs> and uh, it's not, nice of him to go to the Foo Fighters. Though I think hasn't Shaka, Shaquille O'Neal lost a couple of couple of inches since his playing days? I don't know what's going on with that image, but uh, yeah, it was a uh, a lot of fun for him to get out and see the Foo Fighters and. Uh, uh, he's, uh, he's got a few fights on, hasn't he, really? He has got a few fights on. As you say, he's finally back in the country and he's on leave. But, uh, Mark, there's no doubt you could fill he in for him. He loves a sure. celebrity endorsement, um, yeah, the... Albo. He just can't help himself. He loves a celebrity endorsement. I think he's walking down with Jodes and he's like, look, Jodes, it's Marsha Hines. This is going to save me. Quick, <laughs> let's get a photo with her. And he desperately needed it. He wanted it. He got it. He put it up. And everyone's talking about her abs. They're not even talking about him. <laughs> exactly. They're talking about Marsha Hines' abs. So he's like, God damn it, I lost to the tummy. Marsha Hines' tummy. Crazy. <laughs> can't get a, can't uh, win a trick, this bloke. I cannot feel, win a trick. I feel like we're getting a sneak preview. Is this a, this a sneak preview of this week's cartoon? <laughs> Mate, it'd be a pretty, pretty quick turnaround, but, hey, we can make it happen. <laughs> Great stuff. Now, Tim, you must have been keeping a close eye on COP28. And the, the good mm. news is that it's been a complete failure. So that, that'll, that'll help the planet. I, I love the way this is all trending. You know, a few years ago it was all mung beans and sadness and, you know, we're going to be getting around in horrible little you know, two-wheelers and all this sort of, you know. And now it's being held in Dubai and, uh, and it's all pro-nuclear. So when the next COP event is held, there's, by the way, a millionaire who flies there in his own jet. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of people who don't uh, aren't exactly uh, members of the Greta Thunberg fan club. But it, the way this is trending, they'll be introducing whaling next. They'll be they'll be uh, they'll, they'll be uh, they'll have scrimshaw sex <laughs> and, and you know, kitten blood will be the next thing we're running cars on. It's going entirely in a, in, a, in a good direction as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, that's a brilliant solution. We can use whale oil, the sustainable oil. That's where they'll go. Um, but what about this? I'm going to play you, Mark, this clip I played at the top of the program of Chris Bowen in Dubai saying that we should give up on fossil fuels. Uh, that is the number two and number three most valuable exports of this country, coal and gas. He wants to give them up. Have a listen. If we are to keep 1.5 degrees alive, fossil fuels has no ongoing role to play in our energy systems. And I speak as the climate and energy minister of one of the world's largest fossil fuel exporters. To ingratiate myself to this virtue signalling crowd, I offer the economic future of my country. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a wacko, mate. He's an absolute clown. It's, um, it's, it's quite funny, to be honest, this whole thing. I haven't seen COP 1 to 27, but COP 28 has really delivered in terms of the storylines here. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Like, the location to set it in the UAE was, was one thing, and then to have the president, that Sultan Al Jabba, who owns an oil company himself, um, that is just sensational. You've got Al Gore you know, tweeting angrily from his private jet on the way out of there because they're phasing out, phasing out. Chris Bowen couldn't even get the story right, thought he was getting ahead of the story. They couldn't find the roadmap out of there. He looks like a goose. It's um, honestly, you can't write it. And from here in Melbourne, where I am, you could hear the shrieks as uh, all these climate <laughs> alarmists woke up 
at, at the crack of noon today. You could hear the shrieks. I'm finding it a comedy. I think they're seeing it a bit more like a horror film at the moment. <laughs> All the shrieks around Fitzroy. Mm. Now, um, Tim, the other thing, we showed this last night. Uh, in Dubai... Mm. Chris Bowen gave a sort of welcome to country speech, a recognition of Indigenous peoples. Yeah. Now, the Indigenous people in Dubai are all millionaires and the people they suppress are their fellow Muslims yeah. they bring in from Bangladesh and Pakistan to do all the work yeah. for them for, for nothing. What about fighting for their rights? Well, yeah, this is, this is going to be... Once they stop, you know, Australia exporting things that are valuable, like coal and oil and gas, we're going to be exporting sanctimony. We're going to be exporting what <laughs> country ceremonies, which is, by the way, it's already occurring in the US. They're, they're, they've got their acknowledgement of country things, which um, is, is very new to them, and they're not they're not dealing with it. Well, they need some uh, consulting work. Just by the way, Mark, as a, a, a great uh, televisual artist and presumably a bit of a student of television, I, I just it's hard to keep out of our mind... Um, a great, probably the greatest musical theme song of any TV show when regarding when we're looking at events from Dubai. Bad cop, bad cop. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they ban your oil? It's terrific. We're gonna revive that tune. It's one of the best songs ever. I love the the idea of exporting our sanctimony. I mean, this is like hydrogen and sanctimony. Uh, they're very similar. They're, they're both uh, in abundance in Australia. They're just very hard to package up and export. Yeah, it's also hard to run a, to run a car on sanctimony, but they don't give it a shot. I mean, there's, a, there's enough. There's a, I mean, hopefully, they don't catch as fire, catch on fire quite as often as many of the EVs do. So maybe that's useful. Well, you know, we won't have. Uh, a, they'd you know, know about it if they turned the air conditioning off. <laughs> they'd know about yeah, it if they turned the air conditioning off in Dubai instantly. Yes. They just went, no more fossil fuels. Everyone would cook. Yeah, exactly. Uh, look, if Prince Charles can run a car, King Charles as he is now, can run a car on cheese, then surely we can run one on sanctimony. Now, I'm hoping you guys have both been able to see the, uh, uh, the former Labor Premier of Victoria, Daniel Andrews' five categories for COVID uh, compliance. Uh, Mark, have you had a look at it? Do you know which category you fit into? Are you the, the very compliant category one or two? Or, or are you category number five? It's all a conspiracy and government is the enemy. Uh, look, I'd, I'd like to think that uh, I was the latter. But uh, to be honest, like, I, I actually feel really embarrassed for, for where I was here in Melbourne. I, I, was, I was one of those people that was, like, sort of angrily walking home at 9 o'clock at night, um, just going, this is ridiculous. Oh, I should do something about it and did nothing about it. Um, I just absolutely acquiesced, but I'm, I'm deeply ashamed of that uh, when we look back. And uh, honestly, I got, the, I got the jab just because it was like, you can't go to the pub. That's all it took it was just a threat. You can't go to the pub, so I went there. Well, I was bloody acquiescent as well, right? I remember knocking back the chance to go on a walk with a, an AFL legend through a mutual friend, but I thought, it's three people walking it's against the rules, and I was on TV every night railing against the rules, so I thought the worst thing is I could be, be you know, prosecuted for breaking them, uh, and so I never got to meet the AFL legend, Tim. What category were you? You, sh you surely weren't uh, overly compliant. Well, I wasn't in Victoria, so um, as I am now, but uh, I'm just surprised when they were asking these questions, they actually expected coherent responses. Usually when you keep people locked up for long, for long periods of time and what basically amounted to a police state, they're, they're, they're the happy enforcers of our Victorian laws, you generally sort of lose the ability to communicate with the physical universe. You know, you can just maybe get your grunt out or you can tap a hoof to indicate, indicate uh, yes or no. So <laughs> they haven't got the, that many lucid reactions to their fault. <laughs>